All right. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another week of Saber Sims DFS Office Hours. It is Monday, August 21st of 2023 here. We do the show Monday through Friday, 2 p.m. Eastern. So we'll be catching up on all the questions that came in over the weekend here and then all the questions that we're going to receive live. There are three ways to get your questions in. One, send us an email, support at sabersim.com. Two, post it in the YouTube chat. And three, post it in the Office Hours channel. In our Discord server, we will get to all the questions before the end of the show, as always. And if you're not in the Discord, want to get access to that Office Hours channel, there is a link in the description of this video to join. So go ahead, get in the Discord, get access to Office Hours channel, get access to all of our similar channels, see when lineups are released, see when players are scratched, see when Sims run for that updated news, uh, get access to all of our individual sport channels where members of the Saberson team, members of the community are helping each other get better at DFS each and every day. But with that said, looking ahead, we have an eight game MLB main slate tonight. And then we have the PGA Tour Championship teeing off Thursday morning and Football growing uh, closer and closer here. I think we're within three weeks away from from our first Sunday uh, main slate here. And then I think there was also a Thursday game. So so less than three weeks away from NFL season. So really fun time to join up and, and check us out, right? So we also have a link to a free trial in the description if you want to check us out. But with that being said, going to get the app pulled up here. Uh, we have questions in all three areas here one in support one in the youtube chat and one in the office hours channel so we're going to go hit this support one first and then we will go from there but good question to get us started today I was reading this one a little bit earlier question says so i have a question that involves the 95th percentile so for example pre-build when i add the numbers for the players in mlb on DraftKings in the 95th percentile column i get a number Post build, the number that shows up in the lineups as a 95th percentile is totally different. Why is that? Uh, and then he just kind of um, talks talks a little bit more about about how they're not exactly the same. But but this is a really good question, and I'm very happy to clarify this. So what you will see on the home screen are these percentiles, right? So basically, what we do is we look at the player's range of outcomes, right? And I'm going to pull this up for Lucas Giolito. So his mean outcome here is 18.6 but this doesn't tell us anything about his median outcome right so these these um 25th 50th 75th 85th 95th 99th percentiles are basically uh, the fantasy point values that fall within a certain bucket in his range of outcomes so if you were looking for it's interesting here that lucas giolito's mean is actually the same as his median and that's because he is so uh very very close to normally distributed here but if we were to go look at a batter right if i go look at ronald Acuna jr his mean projection is 11.35 and then his median projection is 10 points and that's because this right skew data set when this when you see this big tail to the right here these one percent outcomes which are very very high fantasy sport outcomes shift the distribution and have a bigger effect on the mean than the median right so these outliers uh the median handles those a little better and gives you a little bit uh, closer to, to actual number, right? So uh, the means get affected a lot more. That's really the takeaway that you need to understand here. But getting back to this, right? So these percentiles, if I were to look at a 95th percentile, what does that mean, right? So the best way to think about it is to just, just divide it by, a, or I'm sorry, subtract it from 100. So do 100 minus 95. And then that that's five, right? So basically this is an outcome that Ronald Acuna gets 5% of the time in our simulation. So what we are saying is that, hey, if we go and look at all of the games that we have Sims for, for the Atlanta team, Ronald Acuna Jr. scores 29 points 5% of the time. That's a 1 in 20 chance. So 1 out of 20 times, Ronald Acuna is getting 29 points. 99th percentile is 1% of the time. So 1% of the time in the Sims, he's getting 38 points. And remember, we have thousands and thousands of game Sims for each game on the slate here, right? So that that is what this number does. What we do in the post build, we actually do something different. And the reason for that uh, just comes down to the likelihood of it happening. So in the post build, we have what we call lineup percentiles. So I can, I can see why it would be confusing. Um, you know, somebody might say, okay, you know, the, the lineup percentile is just going to be all of these 95th percentiles added up, right? But but the likelihood of that happening 
is actually very, very low because there's 10 players in this lineup, right? So ba- what you have to do is you have to take one out of 20, that 5% chance, and take it to the power of 10. So, you know, you would do Drew Rom's 95th percentile. So one out of 20 times one out of 20 for Paul Blackburn times one out of 20 for Sean Murphy times one out of 20 for Matt Olson, right? Uh, you could see that that this outcome, this nine, it, every player reaching their 95th percent percentile outcome, the odds of that happening are actually very, very low. And the more important thing here is that, you know, you're probably not going to need that to win. If you look at an MLB winning lineup on, on any given night, we talk about this, like we were trying to build the winning lineup. We are not trying to build the optimal lineup. We are not trying to get as many points as we can. We are just trying to beat all the other lineups in our contest, right? So even then that's not super useful. Uh, this is a problem that we were trying to solve for a while. So what we ended up doing here, uh, if you see down here at the bottom, you have a summary statistic called 95th percentile. If you hover over it, you will see all the percentiles for this lineup. What we now do is we build your lineups. And then after your lineups are built, we go back into our Sims. And then we see how this group of players did in every simulation that we use to build your lineups. So we're going to put this combination of 10 players together. And then we are going to say, okay, how did they do as a whole? So think of this range of outcomes for the player, think about now we have a range of outcomes for the lineup as a whole. And this 95th percentile number that you see, this 152.68 fantasy outcome, that is not Rom's 5% times Blackburn's 5% times John Murphy's 5%. That we are saying that, hey, this lineup in its entirety has a 5% chance of achieving 152.68 fantasy points. So the likelihood of this lineup percentile is actually decent, right? A one out of 20 chance for this lineup as a whole. So this is a much more useful number. Uh, this also, you know, kind of exemplifies what's actually going to happen in your contest. You, If you look at winning lineups, sometimes you're going to see, you know, a five stack and maybe two players got over 20 points, highly exceeded their outcome. One guy got closer to maybe like a 75th percentile, did a little better than his mean. And then you have one guy that, uh, or, you know, one or two players that got just around their mean. Sometimes you even see a zero, right? You have this big four stack or I'm sorry, big five stack where four players did really well. And then one player did poorly, but because you were able to soak up all the fantasy points from that team, it makes up for that one player's poor performance, right? So baseball in particular, you're going to see lineups with a uh, possibly one, at least one low scoring player. I, I've seen it plenty on plenty of times here, but that is why if you go to the home screen, you add up all the 95th percentiles of the players in this lineup. It is not going to match what you see in the post build when you hover here. So it's a really good question. Happy to clarify it, but that is what we are trying to do. We think it's a much better approach to percentiles overall. We understand how important percentiles are and think that this is a much more useful number, useful uh, statistic to have. But great question to get us started today. I'm going to jump over to the Office Hours channel here. And looks like we have two questions here from Snowman. Snowman is in the chat. Hello, Snowman. Hope. Hope you're having a good day. Hope everyone is having a good day here. And next question says, Saber Sam, looking, uh, looking for value in players to make winning lineups. And can you talk about how to find value, favorable matchups and players like price for points? Uh, how does Saber Sam come up with different lineups that are different than average players are picking their lineups? Okay, so I'm going to talk about the second part first, and then we'll talk about finding value. But I think that they kind of go hand in hand, right? So I'll... A traditional optimizer, other DFS tools, right, are are not simming out these games play by play, right? We have uh, at bat by at bat sims for baseball, right? We we simulate out the games. We do that thousands of times, and then that is how we come up with the projections, right? So the great thing is that we're able to see how these players do in the sims, what at what frequency, and how variant they are, right? We talk about the difference between pitchers. And batters all the time. Pitchers have this nice bell-shaped curve. And then batters have this big right-skewed uh, data set where a lot of the time their most likely outcome is zero fantasy points, right? So just having this information helps us to understand, you know, uh, 
how often we should put the the highest projected players into your lineup, right? Acuna projected for the most points, but you know, still highest likely outcome is zero, right? So when we go to build your lineups, we are not using the average projections that you see on the home screen. What we are doing, depending on where your sim diversity slider is set, I'll talk about the edges here and then I'll talk about uh, the middle here. So at sim diversity 10, it is one of the sliders that we use uh, when, when building your lineups, when you're putting in the settings for the contest that you're playing. At Sim Diversity 10, we are taking one sim from each game on the slate, putting them together to create a slate simulation, playing that slate simulation out, and then building you the highest fantasy point lineup within the salary cap. And then that lineup gets moved into your pool. At Sim Diversity 0, if Sim Diversity is turned off, what is happening is that then we would be using the average projections from the home screen to build your lineups here, Okay. In between that, uh, look, we'll start at nine. We'll go back to nine here. So we've talked about the top. We've talked about the bottom. Now we're going to talk about the middle. So at nine, we are taking small groups of simulations. We are taking a, a handful of sims. Let's say five. I don't know the exact number. So let's say we're taking five simulations of each game. And then we are cr still creating a single slate simulation. So our slate simulation consists of five sims for each game on the slate. We're going to play those games out five times. And then we are going to build the best lineup from those sims. The good thing about that is that if a player who has a uh, low fantasy average expectation, if they have a one really good game, they're not going to end up in the lineup as if they would if it was Sim Diversity 10. They're still going to have to perform well enough over the other four games to make their fantasy point worth it for them to be in the lineup. So, so you get a little bit of curation from these outlier outcomes by having groups of Sims, which is what we want, right? So like I said, baseball, not trying to build the optimal, just trying to build a winning lineup. We do want to have some consistency, some frequency of, of doing well. So having a group of Sims helps us with that. And then as this Sim diversity slider gets lower and lower, we're going to be using more and more Sims when we're building your lineup. We're not going to be using all of them until we get to zero, but we're going to be using more and more. And what you can expect to happen is that the the less Sims we use, the, the more, I'd say, um, random these fantasy points can be, right? So we have Acuna at 11.3 fantasy points, and we're only taking five Sims. That number could be really, really low, or that number could be really, really high, right? But then as we take more and more Sims, as we take 20, as we take... 100 as we take a thousand right the the fantasy point outcome for ronald acuna on average across those sims is going to move closer and closer to his mean projection uh it's a law of large numbers right we talk about coin flipping example if you were to flip a coin uh 10 times you know it's 50 50 heads or tails right you might get eight and two you might get seven and three but as you do that experiment 100 times, 1,000 times, 100,000 times, you're going to move closer and closer to 50-50. So same same thing is happening here, right? So that is that is why building lineups with Saber Sim is different because we have the Sims, we have the play-by-play, -play, and then we are using that information to build you lineups differently than other tools. We are not optimizing based on projected score. We have our own internal uh, lineup sorting metrics, which include average projection, lineup upside, and the average adjusted ownership of your lineups. Adjusted ownership is also another in-house metric, right? So we're, we're, we're trying to do things to help you to give you a better chance of winning and to be different from other players in your contest. And then second question here um, was the first question actually we said, was asked about looking for value, right? How do you find value on slates? Uh, how do you figure out, you know, where you might want to get different from the field? And one thing, a simple thing that you can do here is if you want to just look at the actual, you know, point per dollar value, okay, I want to just, you know, very simply, you could just sort by the value column. This is my projection divided by salary times a thousand. It gives you like a uh, point per dollar value. So, so higher value means you're getting more projected points uh, for the player's salary on average here, right? So, so that is what a lot of traditional optimizers are doing. We have that metric. So to help you uh, as like a reference point, I use it a little more for NBA here. I don't think it's super useful for MLB, but one thing that I do like to do is run a research build. And what I call a research build is basically where you turn correlation off and you increase sim diversity to nine. I don't like to do 10 because we're not really looking for optimal lineup. We're just looking for uh, 
players showing up at a higher frequency than their ownership, right? We're looking for some positive leverage plays that we might not have been aware of, right? So running a 0-9 build here, kicking that off. I'm going to use this other build. It's not a 0-9 build, but don't really want to run another build here. And then what I would do, what I would do when I get into here, first thing I would do is I would look at pool ownership here. Uh, pool percent is the amount of times these players come up across all 500 lineups. And then exposure is how much they come up in the number of lineups you are requesting up at the top. So 20 lineups, th this exposure column is going to show how often they're in those 20. And then pool is going to show you how often they're in all 500 here, right? So if I were to go and look at my pitchers, one thing that, that really stands out to me right here is that Drew Rom is in 18 out of my top 20 lineups here, but he's only in 15% of my entire 500. So if I were to sort by pool percent here, uh, he is the one, two, three, four. He is the sixth highest exposed player across my entire pool for the pitchers, but he is the number one exposed player in my top 20 lineups. So that to me is a little bit of a red flag here. I might want to look into him more and, and see what exactly is going on. I think it's a pricing mistake here. Uh, looks like he is priced at 4,000. And I know that uh, he was traded from the Orioles to St. Louis in the Jack Flaherty trade. So it looks like DraftKings is pricing him as a reliever here. And I believe he's expected to throw somewhere between like 80 to 90 pitches tonight. So, so it seems like a pricing mistake. I could see why he is coming up so frequently here, but, but, but that is, you know, I did that research before seeing this red flag would lead me to do that research. And then I could figure out how I want to approach the slate from there. Right. So looking at some of this pool stuff, looking at uh, my, my team stacks and my batters, you know, I like to come in here, sort by stack pool exposure. I like to start with five stacks and work backwards here. So what is my highest exposed five stack, right? And, and you know, one thing that stands out to me here is Casey and Texas are very, very close in stack pool exposure in the entire pool here, 13%, 12%. But in my top 20 lineups, Texas is in 11 and Kansas City is in one. So why the big discrepancy here, right? What is so different between these two teams that is leading them to be in... A, in my top lineups at such a different percent, right? So then boom, now I'm going to go research Kansas city and Texas. And then I'm going to look at all these other categories, right? Um, Texas is showing up a bunch all, all the way across. And then Kansas city uh, kind of falls off as some of these smaller stacks, right? So that's another note. So tech, a lot of Texas here, maybe that's why they're showing up at such a high rate. Uh, but you know, don't forget about Kansas city here. Right? So, so just, these are just different ways to run a build, look at the information that the builder is providing you and then go and research further and figure out how you want to approach the slate from there. So these are all things that I like to do to try and find value. All right. Good question there. Uh, we are going to jump into the YouTube chat now. So question here from Tim. So Tim said, any news on upcoming NFL sim changes? I assume Jordan will be putting out new content on it, but since it is right around the corner, I wanted to check in. Thanks. So great question, Tim. Uh, you know, football is fast approaching here. We are going to have a lot of content for you guys uh, very, very soon here. So expect to see either emails or in-app banners or uh, information in the Discord I'll definitely mention it when it comes out, but we're probably going to have our how to beat NFL DFS in 2023 playlist here. So all that is coming really, really soon. I don't want to say exactly when, uh, but you can, you guys can bet when it is out, we will heavily communicate it to you guys. So nobody misses it ahead of the season, right? We want to make sure that you guys have time to watch it, consume it, ask questions about things that didn't make sense to you, and then get that information prior to week one. So that, that information should be out soon here and more details to come on that. So I said, we want football. Uh, we, we definitely want football here, but uh, looking around, uh, we are all caught up with questions at the moment here. Those were all the questions we had in via support, the office hours channel and the YouTube chat here. So while I wait for any last questions, 
to come in. Just want to remind you guys, if you guys are not playing over on Owner's Box, would highly recommend taking advantage of our promotion. We partnered with Owner's Box at the beginning of the MLB DFS season here. It's been a great partnership to date. They just released their contest offerings for NFL Week 1. They have a big 50K to first flagship contest here. Uh, we've seen a lot of overlay in their contest throughout the MLB season here. Not sure what's going to happen with NFL season here, but definitely could be an opportunity to capitalize on some overlay. So I've been seeing contests with reduced rake, no rake, full overlay where they're paying you to play. The competition is generally going to be softer than what you're going to find on DraftKings, FanDuel, or Yahoo here. When you use promo code Saber or SaberSim when you sign up, one, you can get up to a $500 deposit bonus, and two, you can um, earn free months of SaberSim just by playing on the site and nothing else. So each time you hit one of our entry fee tiers, our team will reach out to you, let you know, hey, you've earned a free month of SaberSim. You can cash in right away or wait till the next tier. Either way, once you do that, uh, we will reset your tracking to zero and there is no limit on the amount of credit that you can earn while this promotion lasts. So you will automatically start earning towards your next free month. If you're looking for this sign up page, it is linked in the description of this video. Uh, and then question here about owner's box said any tips for owner's box, super flex for NFL, uh, two QBs. Yeah. So one thing about owner's box is that they do have a super flex position here. Um, similarly, the way that it works for MLB, what I've noticed is that, Greater than 95% of the time, SaberSim is putting a pitcher into your into your super flex spot in your owner's box lineups. It's not 100% of the time, but it is very often. And, and the reason for that here, if I were to go to tonight's main slate on owner's box, uh, what you can see here is if I go to batters, the highest projected batters projected for 12 points. If I go to my pitchers, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have ten pitchers above projected for more than our highest projected batter. So even even Bailey Falter, our tenth, you know, quote unquote best pitcher tonight, still is projected for more points than our highest projected batter, Ronald Acuna Jr. Right. So um, I think that th this this average fantasy point outcome coupled with the uh, normal distribution for the pitchers just leads to you getting a lot of pitchers in your super flex spot. It's not 100% of the time. Like I said, you know, I'm going with 95th uh, could be greater than that, but I've definitely seen lineups with a batter in the super flex spot, but that really all comes down to how the Sims were sampled, right? Were there enough good batters in your slate simulation to overcome the pitcher fantasy point outcome where a batter was indeed a better option in the super flex spot, right? And I kind of like that a lot for one particular reason. The reason is that I think that people make a mistake with hard and fast rules in DFS where it's like, hey, you know, never do this or always do that. And and I think that's a good general rule for traditional optimizers. But with our ability to simulate out the slates, we actually understand the rate at which those things happen. And therefore you can play it at a somewhat close to the rate that it happened. So yes, in general, pitchers are going to be better in your super flex, but that doesn't mean you have to always play a pitcher in your super flex. Maybe batters come up, you know, 5% of the time. So you would probably want to play that, you know, close to 5% of the time. I'm just using this number as an example, right? But, but it, it would be really hard to do that on a traditional optimizer, right? So I think that, you know, you can you can find some of those small nuances, those small edges by using SaberSim, by how we simulate out the slates here. Uh, but I think that you're going to see something very particular for NFL. I know this was an NFL question, but I can imagine, you know, once we have projections out for week one here and you're building lineups, um, you know, just build your lineups and then go into the post build, go into your build and see what you're getting, right? You can, you can go position by position in the post build and then see like, Hey, you know, how often am I getting a quarterback in my super flex? Right. And then you could figure out, you know, what you want to do with that information from there. But your the exposures that you get after you run a build are really going to be your feedback mechanism, right? That is what is going to answer the questions that you have for different scenarios, right? So uh, use those. And that is, you know, figure out a way to do man plus machine. We talk about it, you know, some people are, all about the data, all about the projections, you know, no human intervention. And they just roll with that. I would call that, you know, mo uh, machine like focused building. And then there are the hand builders, the pe people that are getting in the weeds, you know, building lineups by hand, 
that, that's like uh, your your man version. But I always say what's best is man plus machine. Figure out a way to utilize the tools and still, you know, double check it, put your own twist on it, uh, make some small value adjustments, and then that is always going to lead to better lineups in in my opinion here. But with that being said, uh, not seeing any more questions at the moment here. Appreciate everybody tuning in. Uh, glad we're able to catch up on all the questions for from the weekend. Uh, we'll be right back here tomorrow, Tuesday, 2 p.m. Eastern for our next show. But if you guys are bit of lineups throughout the day, question pops in your head, drop it in the Office Hours channel, drop it in the upcoming stream link on YouTube. I will have the streams scheduled out for the rest of the week by the end of today. So I always appreciate when you guys do that. Helps us to get a steady queue of questions at the start of the show. But until then, take care. Good luck in your contest. I will see you all. Thanks. Bye.